Well, I do know that for a number of people who watch this program, the newspaper review section is one of their favorite segments. But in recent times, broadcast houses have been, have been under a new directive from the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission to uh, be careful, more or less, that was the import of the letter, to you know, review the papers with caution, uh, particularly with matters relating to security. There has been some controversy over that particular uh, directive, and w this morning we're seeking some legal perspectives into the matter to see uh, just how that can be construed. We have with us this morning Mr. Afa Mosigwe, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria. You're welcome to Sunrise Elite this morning. Thank you for having me. I do not know if you've, you know, taken uh, some time to look through that particular directive, have you? Well, I've seen media reports of it. You have? I've read it, yes. Okay. I, well, I do not know how heavily you um, enjoy newspaper review segments on whatever platform you listen to. I want to believe it's channels you listen to at every point in time. <laughs> um, but uh, did you think that that in any way put that put those kinds of segments under jeopardy, in your view? Oh, I think so. Now, the letter Soto, in his wording, curtailed the ability of media houses um, in their reportage of matters relating to security. Now, while it would appear it's set out to achieve the idea of do not encourage views that are divisive that may throw, pit one ethnic group or section of the country against the other. But the, the context of the letter is to muscle the press, the ability to disseminate information, amounts to undue interference in the content of media reports. And that was a bit, appeared to be a violation of section 39.1 of the Constitution, which gives media houses like other, individual, other persons the right to disseminate information without interference. Now, this right is not absolute. Now, by law, in the interest of national security, that can be curtailed. But this letter has not been shown to be that. And again, while the NBC Act gives power to the NBC to make regulations, a mere letter is not a regulation. Now, that, section, that letter, I mean, the one I saw, made re reference to Section 541F, I think, of the NBC Code, and 543, I think. But if you look at 543, it also says that in reporting events, mm -hmm. media houses shall adhere to mm -hmm. principle of responsibility, accuracy. So they have a responsibility to be a neutral. So when you are trying to censor what they report, you're trying to make them not to be neutral because you're asking them to take a side. So they are not to report events with accuracy. And to the extent you also said you should even tell guests who appear on programs as to what they say. You seek to censor views. You don't want people to express their views. So the idea is maybe as I came here, channels is to take me into a room and warn me of what to say and what not to say, and maybe how to say it. Is that how you're reading it? That's how I'm reading uh, it. When you say you should advise guests who appear there, yes, you're trying to get into the content of the views they express. What if it meant, I mean, I want to, there, there will certainly will be certainly many different interpretations to that. It could be that, you know, guests have to be careful. I mean, naturally, guests need to be careful, don't they? Now, when there's a security situation and people are kidnapped and are held in captivity and no serious effort is being made to rescue them and guests come to talk about that i don't know what you mean by being careful is it that you should not admit the fact that people are being kidnapped or have been kidnapped or that ransom is being paid or if for example guests appear in a situation where police said we rescued these kidnapped persons mm -hmm. and, and the family says no the police did not rescue them we paid ransom and guests come to talk about them and express their views on them. Mm. Is that that? I, I mean, you know, when we talk about some of these things in a very vague manner, I, I'm unable to understand them. Because when you say that guests should be, of course, guests know that when they appear on program, they should not make inciting statements mm -hmm. or statements that 
uh, spread hatred or pit one ethnic groups or a religious group against the other. Mm -hmm. So some it's guests know that. I mean, and, and most guests know that. But sometimes people could become emotional. Isn't that correct? I mean, I'm sure that you've listened to a few guests and sometimes you, you say... Well, human beings, people could get emotional. It Indeed. depends on how... I mean, if, your people, if, if you come from a community where people are being kidnapped or you've escaped kidnap and you report to police and nothing is being done and that's a subject matter for discussion and you get emotional, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. So being emotional is not a justification. Mm. And a mere letter is not a regulation. We'll come to that shortly as to, you know, what power a letter carries. How, however, uh, what I would like to take is some parts of this. It says uh, some of the topics also have ethnological coating, thereby pitching one section of the country against the other and leaving Nigerians in daily hysteria. Now... Naturally, broadcast houses are able to do their own news reports. I mean, this is not saying anything about the news reports that broadcast houses are doing. This directive pertains strictly to newspapers and how new, the stories in the dailies are reported. I, I don't know if you, if you see a distinction you know, there. You know, the, you know the problem I have? Yes. So we suggest that newspapers can write it, but the broadcast houses cannot talk about them. So they should be in public space. You're trying to regulate in what form they get into the public space. So if the media, have paper, if the newspapers can write about them without anybody to go into court or saying anything that it is wrong for you to write about them, then it beats me silly why the media broadcast organizations cannot also talk about them. Whichever way you look at them, at it, the information is out there in the public space. They are available online. So why is somebody worried that the TV stations and the radio houses also want to bring this also i mean bring this further to the public domain mm. maybe it's for the same reason why the tv houses and radio houses were regulated in the first place well you see at the end of the day whether regulated in the first place or not they deal with the right to receive and impart knowledge which section 39 of the constitution has for has them um, protected if there are infractions we talk about that but when we keep being touchy about what people can say, we keep trying to narrow the space of what people can talk about. That's my worry. Maybe you still may think there's nothing wrong with it, which I doubt. But there's the people who are talking about, they, are, they, they move to amend the NBC code, the whatever, press, whatever law, and we keep moving. And it seems that the direction is, you shouldn't talk. We should be able to restrict the ability to impart, to, to impart knowledge and then... Um, you know, discuss public uh, distance. In, in the situation where we are in, we must have discussions. We must be able to face ourselves and tell ourselves the truth. And I don't think that the way the NBC is moving is the best way. It's only in Nigeria that I see that maybe a director in a company that owns a license to a radio station has an infraction on air. You shut down the radio station. An infraction by an individual in an organization that employs so many people. No hearing done. You simply take the report and then you issue a release. You ban it. You shut it down. You impose fines. Even where there is, is doubtful statutory authority for the position of the fine. Because I know Section 12 of the Interpretation Act has said, yes, said if you have power to make regulation, you can make regulation, but impose a fine of 100 naira or six months imprisonment. It's also presupposing some kind of trial, fair tri hearing. None of these things are being done. Maybe if it doesn't worry many people, it worries me. Mm. So I'm wondering now, you, you've spoken about the letter not being regulation. No, it's not. What do you think should have happened? Now, the power given to the NBC to control and regulate the media gives the power to make regulation when you read it side by side with the Interpretation Act. So the NBC has made, with the approval of the minister, the NBC code. If the NBC feels, the commission feels that there is need to amend the code to provide for certain situations that are not hit at all provided for. You should amend that code because some of the infractions there may carry the position of a fine or a prison term upon conviction by a court. And because people's rights and liberty may be affected, you cannot by a mere letter create an offense or create a law because regulation is a subsidiary legislation. It's a type of law. So it has to pass through that process of lawmaking as, provided, as stipulated in the law. So the NBC makes it, the minister approves it. So upon approval by the minister, it becomes law. So a letter does not qualify as a regulation. Mm. 
So, what, is this really a regulation? Isn't this just a letter of warning? I mean, warning. Let me read them. I'm trying to see if I can get the headed. Newspaper review and current affairs programs. A need for caution. Yes. That, that's read what the it entire is. gamut of the letter. Mm -hmm. It seems to impose restrictions. Yes, it, it started out as a caution. Mm -hmm. And then what is this caution? If, if also, I agree with some sentences in that letter that the media should not glamorize terrorism, yeah, crime, have, and been, some other things. There have been questions on and, that. And no media you. house. But then again, mm -hmm. there's a thin line between what is glamorizing that. So when, when for example, there is insurgency, even Western media seek to interview those who are carrying on those acts of terrorism, maybe to find out their motive. Maybe in our own clan, we think that's a bad thing for the press to do. But you cannot genuinely engage with an opponent, especially one that you hardly see or hear from, if you don't find out what motivates them, what drives them, what plans do they have in mind. And even the social media has also made it easy for them to even put these things out. So you can't continue to pretend these things are not there. And they are happening. I heard this morning, many states are cancelling the Salah celebration. Because Insta of COVID. Well, we say COVID, but we also carry it because of insecurity. We don't have to pretend Abuja is not cancelling it because of COVID. And this wave, if, the, if the Delta strain is here, it's here. So the point is this. We have challenges we should face as a nation. And we should be able to engage ourselves in meaningful discussions. In meaningful discussions. No doubt there's a role the, 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 the media can play in helping government to fight the deepening insecurity. In creating public awareness. But the move will not be towards maybe taking out what maybe the NBC considers to be unpleasant aspects of the news. Is because they even say bad. Is that, that's my take is on that this. Is that what you're reading? Because uh, let me quickly read, read, read the instructions. Because, I mean, you've talked read about the not the glamorizing the nephew. Oh, because yes. they've given instructions, uh, clear they instructions. Talked about, they talked about, not glamorizing. They talked about what you tell guests that appear there. Okay, let me quickly read it uh, so that our, our guests can also decide for themselves. Not glamorizing the nefarious activities of insurgents and terrorists, kidnappers, bandits, etc., advising guests and or analysts on programs not to prioritize, beg your pardon, not to polarize the citizenry with divisive rhetoric in driving home their point, not giving details of either the security issues or victims of these security challenges so as not to jeopardize the efforts of the Nigerian soldiers and other security agents. So, so, so Ma, well, are we talking about, when you talk about not giving details of victims or whatever of the security challenge, are we suggesting that the media houses are privy to intelligence and are leaking it on air? Because first of all, the media, that maybe the newspaper The houses. media are not subject to Official Secrets Act, which regulates government functionaries. Is that what we're suggesting? I'm not aware, too, that seven military personnel come on air to discuss strategy. When you talk about victims, not to jeopardize investigation, they want, even media reports have been known to aid investigation. So let's get this straight because, again. Uh, oh yes, I, I, we have to contextualize this. this and, is I am doing, and, I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm contextualizing it. I know. And I'm in the light of recent moves by the NBC to narrow the public space for discussion. Uh, okay. You cannot pretend no. that this letter exists in isolation of all these myriad of these events. So that is another kettle of fish. I no, mean, it cannot they, be a kettle they, they, are all, they are in the same they basket. They are all in the same basket indeed. Thank but you. you know, if I were to segment them, you know, with the, with regards to this particular letter, let it is within the context of reviewing the newspapers and the front pages. So I'm wondering, I don't know how possible it is, I don't know how much detail can be on the front page as to something that could jeopardize uh, the efforts of security agencies. But so let, let, let's, let, let, this let, do we take an example, the, 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 the banner headline on the Vanguard there? Yes, let's, let's take a look at it Declare for instance. full war. As bandits down, down fight a now, jet. Saying that bandits down a jet, is it glamorizing it? If it's indeed a fact that they downed a fighter jet, and you talk about it, is it glamorizing it? 
if a, a pilot escaped successfully yes, and was rescued by people, is it glamorizing crime? Glamorizing it would be, to, to, in my think opinion, where the media seems to become the mouthpiece and helps to advocate group for a terrorist organization. Have but you seen that anywhere? I mean, I haven't. On, on some of the front pages. And I haven't. Perhaps, I mean, and I haven't. And that's what beats me silly. I haven't seen it. But then, you know, some people will argue that they are the NBC. They, they have responsibility to listen to all broadcast stations. Oh, so, yes, they do. Uh, and um, we, we cannot say that. I cannot sit here now and say I have listened to every single broadcast house in Nigeria. I cannot have done that. So maybe they have, they have a perspective that we are not seeing. I, is it possible? No, it's not possible because what they see and others can't see must be something strange. Because whenever they, 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 they penalize a media outfit for an infraction, alleged infraction, it's publicized. And I can't remember NBC ever, to the best of my knowledge, penalizing a media outfit for glamorizing terrorism. And I don't think any responsible media organization would do that. Mm. Especially through the front pages. I mean, yes, again, and I know also, bring it back and to know, the front also pages. the editorial board of a newspaper will publish something that glamorizes such things. Maybe but there have been so many views expressed in the public space, which I also thought mm -hmm. NBC and the security agencies will be involved, where people threaten people from other ethnic groups or make inflammatory statements. If that's what we're talking about. I, I do know that in some, in some media houses, and we do it here too, sometimes you'll have an analyst, um, a guest analyst, oftentimes the newspaper editors uh, whom we invite to you know, speak to the front pages, speak about what we see on the front pages and provide context uh, to some of the headlines. And I'm just wondering, perhaps it, it could be in, maybe in the analysis of that, uh, that maybe this, this, this directive ha has come up. I, I, I do not know if it's just from reading what is on the front page. And usually, if you have to review the papers, you are, you are usually restricted to sticking with the front pages, you're not allowed to go into the papers. So th there will be questions as to maybe it is in the process of analyzing because there's a mention of guests here. Uh, in, in your mind, I don't know if you've listened to radio stations, maybe you've listened to television houses who, you know, in the process of reviewing what's on the front page, pages, perhaps with a guest or an analyst, have delved a little too much into what could be considered too much detail uh, you know, that could jeopardize the efforts of security agents. What are your thoughts on that? You know that the, the truth, uh, I mean, uh, the self-evidence, the newspaper review is more interesting with the context provided by analysts who are invited in-house. So, and people should be able to express their views. And if in the course of expressing views, lines are crossed, offenses are committed, there are relevant laws to take care of that. And if they're inflammatory statements, my understanding too, live broadcasts are supposed to be a few seconds slow so that if certain things get out of hand, the organization can post it or do something about it. I don't know whether that operates in there, but I know in many countries it's supposed to be a few seconds slower than the guest speaks on air. And the context, I, I seem to think that in some situations as a nation, we have refused to sit down to discuss the bitter reality, the true, mm. bitter truth about some of the challenges we face. And that we have refused to remove some ethno-religious sentiments to address them and call a spade a spade. And you can't wish away these issues by narrowing the space for discussing them. No, you cannot. And I keep saying it. Some of the challenges we have faced is because of our refusal to tackle these issues. And in some cases, thinking that hitting it, swatting it like the way you want to swat a fly, or hitting it with a sledgehammer, will solve that problem. It never does, and it never will. Mm. So you've talked about a larger context, and maybe that's the reason why this has been received with some... Um, Questions. It, why this particular letter has? You know, my I, I will not. By my training as a lawyer, I'm, I, I mean I don't speculate. 
And so when it, when the discussion goes into maybe, in law we say that even the devil himself knows not the intention of man. I will not be able to wander into the mind of the authors of this letter to try to decipher what motivated them in writing this letter. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I will be play, I will be pretending to have powers which I will never have. Uh, the, so uh, if there were such situations, I thought the NBC would have written to the affected media organizations and said, and this is your program, this happened, and this is your program, this happened. This is a blanket letter to all media houses. Mm -hmm. And even if, for a moment, I'm to embark on the speculation with you by, by wanting to agree that maybe it is because it may have happened, right? Not all media houses may have done that. May have done that. But you have said, suggested that we segment. And whether we segment or not, contextually, in the light of recent events, in the light of NBC seeking to transmit into a monster that prevents public discourse of certain issues, I cannot pretend that this can be taken in isolation. Taking it in isolation will be playing the ostrich. That and larger context is what I wanted us to delve into. The larger context, because in recent times, uh, you know, we have seen just last week, Monday, uh, newspaper houses, you know, had a protest on their front pages. They talked about information blackout, um, especially because their attempts to amend the NBC um, code and also the MPC um, Act as well. No, no, MBC Act and also the MPC Press Act. Press Council Act. Yeah, so th there have been, and they say that the amendments that are proposed, you know, have the ability to stifle information. And that's, that's part of the larger context in which we're speaking. The Nigerian Union of Journalists in recent times also released a list of infractions, uh, you know, committed against journalists and how difficult it's becoming to, is, it's becoming to continue to be a journalist in our current climate. Now, if this is the larger context in which we're dealing with, and we're also dealing with the larger context of security, uh, declining security, it will seem, at least going by what we see in the news on a daily, how would you suggest that, you know, regulators um, deal with those that they regulate within this context? You know, if we keep talking about the regulators, regulators, it would appear as if the moment you regulate the media, you have solved the problem. How about the government dealing with the real issues first? People are kidnapped. There are no emergency numbers for people to call. The security agencies have not established numbers to assist people in tackling some of the issues. How do you report? How do you coordinate with security agencies where your people have been kidnapped? I thought... These are some of the challenges the government for the moment should worry about. How do you gather intelligence? How do you engage the communities in tackling some of these challenges? Tens or hundreds of people are kidnapped and driven for miles. And there's no information to security agencies. People don't know how to contact them. The, 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 there was a regulation that people should uh, link their scene in to their sin, presumably to help fight insurgency. People complain that if kidnappers demand for ransom freely using telephone lines, and the security agencies do not seem to have utilized that to get these individuals. I thought these are, should be the low-hanging fruits, the things which the government should focus attention on putting in place. There seems to be an organized campaign to kidnap people and achieve the aim of making parents to keep their children at home and even state governments like Kaduna close down schools. I think it happened in some other states. I thought this should be a major concern. Safeguarding the school, bringing public confidence, working with the media to create security awareness, creating lines of reports. So, and I thought, but when we think that the end point of people who now tell the story of what has happened, and probably have people analyze these events and maybe make projections as to what are the intended consequences or reasons for these actions. And I think that will be 
that will be cutting off one's head because of a headache. I'm not even going to downplay the uh, issue of kidnapping, especially when children are involved. Um, and if there's anything that some of the dailies really do to... Uh, bring that to the fore is that they serve as reminders oftentimes, especially for stories that could become forgotten. Uh, take a look at the Bethel students, for instance. Almost on a daily, you see an update on, as to what the parents are trying to do to bring back their children. Uh, the children who were kidnapped, uh, the pupils who were kidnapped from an Islamia school in Niger, Niger State, State have still not returned uh, to their uh, families and we're talking about children here some some of them mere, mere babes you know kidnapped in that school we have not heard news that they have returned even though we keep hearing updates of what the state government is doing you know every now and again they have uh, commissioned some vigilante group to go and look for the children now there is a hanging death by hanging uh, if you kidnap and things of the sort um, no one can downplay some of those things. But do you think that, I mean, I, I'm bringing this to the fore now in terms of what journalists uh, should be able to do. Um, looking at this, the NBC talks about how, um, you know, the broadcaster has to be the, a peace agent by adhering to the principle of responsibility, accuracy, and neutrality. And neutrality. You know, I don't know. <laughs> how you think that you know a broadcaster can manage this because there there are parents who are definitely aggrieved and of course the security agents if you ask them will say that they're doing something about it in this instance when you are to weigh the grievance that parents feel for instance uh, that their children have been with bandits and kidnappers for uh, weeks going to weeks now and you balance that with what security agents they say they're doing you know, not to, not to dismiss their efforts. It's just that people oftentimes appreciate the results more. Um, how do you think that a broadcaster can really balance this? I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that. You see, every broadcast organization has a responsibility to, rep to report facts as they are. So if students of the Islamia school in Niger State are kidnapped and are still in captivity, it will be irresponsible of a media organization to pretend or to claim that they have been released when they have not been released. It will be, it will be failing to adhere to his duty to report with responsibility and accuracy and neutrality. Because if somebody maybe tries to peddle the propaganda they've been released and the media organization knowing that they've not been released, spins that story. It is no longer being accurate, it's no longer being neutral, it's no longer being responsible. So reporting facts and also interviewing parents who are grieved, who are distressed, who have had to sell houses, who can't sleep, to bring their views as to the suffering they are going through. That's not failing in the duty to promote peace. Because ensuring that justice is done to these people by the government and security agencies working to ensure that their children or wards are rescued or brought home is what brings about peace. So in your opinion, do you think that a little more clarity is needed for this letter as we wrap up now? A little more clarity? I thought that's one letter that should have been better written. The, the media organizations know this. And I keep saying it, in the context in which this letter is written in the light of recent events, it's very difficult to agree that that letter set out to remind them of the code because every broadcaster is deemed to know the provisions of the code. Well, I have to say thank you very much for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. Mr. Chido Noma is a senior advocate of Nigeria and has been speaking with us here. Thank your pardon. I think I just misintroduced you. You have to forgive me. That's okay. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Early this morning. We really appreciate your time. Um, Mr. Afam Osigwe is a senior advocate of Nigeria. We'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll definitely have more perspective on another issue. Uh, so please stay with us. <laughs>